RuneScape has a lot of bosses, and most players have killed at least a handful of them. But you would never suspect that hiding under the town of Yunil, there's a secret boss that most people don't even know exists, despite being in the game for over 20 years. This thing has unique drops and even offers a hyper-efficient training method, but there's one problem. It can't be dealt damage. Normally, at least. Almost no one kills this boss, but today I'm going to take it on and learn everything there is to know about the mysterious boss of Yunil. Before we dive in, let me catch you up to speed. Intro in 3, 2, 1. The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Ah, uh, another beautiful day in Yanil as usual. And I would know, as being a one chunk man, I've spent over 500 hours locked to this city. Yet, in all that time, I've never been able to kill the boss of Yanil once. But today, that changes. I will be taking this boss down. Hopefully it's not gonna matter that my best gear looks like this. Actually, gear isn't the reason I haven't been able to do it. Let me just quickly catch you up. Last time I finally reached level 67 agility, all from painstakingly training on the Watchtower Trellis and in the Yanil Agility Dungeon, which took around 80 hours total. That checked off the final skilling task for the chunk, leaving only these tasks left for me to complete. But it actually did a lot more than that. With 67 agility, I can reach the final room of the Agility Dungeon. It's probably this high agility requirement that makes the boss who lives here so obscure. Despite literally being the second non-quest boss added to the game following the King Black Dragon, and having been around since RuneScape Classic, very few players know the name Salarin the Twisted. At level 70 combat and a max hit of 7, he's not the most dangerous boss, but he has a special mechanic. I've alluded to it already, but let me now be very clear. You cannot damage Salarin with your normal bossing setup. A whip, a blowpipe, a trident, none of these will work. You'll just hit zeros and he'll roast you to your face but I think I can actually take advantage of his special mechanics. In fact, I'm relying on them to help me hit some of the biggest goals left on this account. I really want to show you what fighting this boss looks like, what kind of loot he has, and how he can massively help the account, but there's one problem. Currently, my only way to get to Salarin is to run through the entire agility dungeon. Every trip through the dungeon has a chance to drop me into the poison spider pit below, dealing heavy damage and poisoning me, dealing over 100 poison damage in total. Without reliable access to anti-poison, I'll quickly burn through my food and end up making each trip hyper inefficient and basically unviable. Thankfully, there's an easy solution. This door. It skips all the dangerous agility obstacles and it's accessible from this house right here, conveniently close to a bank. All I have to do is get 82 thieving to pick it open. Wait, 82? <laughs> yep, 82 thieving, an absurdly high skill requirement, but it's also an elite diary step, making it one of the chunk tasks I've known about since day one. I would have had to do this grind regardless, so I figure I should get it out of the way before diving into fighting Salarin. So I'm here training thieving. It's been a little while, so as a quick refresher, I had to get to 65 thieving to pickpocket one of these guys. A watchman. As with everything in Yanil, they're weird, old, janky, and basically useless to everyone but me. There's only four of them in the entire game, and they're only found right here in the watchtower. Every successful pickpocket gets me 60 coins, a loaf of bread, and 137.5 XP. Actually, sounds pretty sweet, right? It is until you realize that these guys start at around a 40% success rate and max out at 69% success. Nice. Anyway, let's just say I'll be seeing a lot of this for the what next, do you I don't know, doing? 40 hours. There's the first level of this thieving grind in the background that I'm doing. 66 thieving. Got 14 to go. Thieving Watchmen can get boring even for a respectable chunk man such as myself, so I had some friends come over to help keep me entertained. Okay, now I'm gonna do a clip for the video. Get ready. I'm coming. I'm not wearing anything cool though. Should I wear something cool? I'm wearing a gold necklace currently, so you have to match that. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll wear something cool. I'll wear something cool. Ready? You better look good. Let's go to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh my god. What's up? So awesome. <laughs> 68 hey. thieving! <laughs> Say that. this bread? Yeah. <laughs> did I do it? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. 
this is so mundane. It feels like a job sometimes. Gotta sit down and do my 9 to 5 pickpocketing watchman. But I guess playing RuneScape for a job is pretty cool anyway. But you know what's another cool job? Being a game designer, which is exactly what I got my degree in from today's video sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. Hello, I'm back again to type my favorite video sponsor, SNHU, where I learned to make the games you're seeing behind me, starting from absolutely no knowledge. But first, you tell me something. Does this sound familiar? You went to school for a year, maybe two, you found a kinda meh, dropped out, did something else with your life, and now years later you want to go back to school and finish your degree in something more interesting, say, Game development? That's exactly what happened to me, and I was amazed when SNHU was able to look at my transcript and transfer in almost two full years of credits for my other program where I was studying music. That let me focus more on core game development classes and less on general education, and it allowed me to finish my degree way faster than if I'd started from scratch, all online. SNHU is a fully accredited nonprofit school with a massive selection of online degrees offered at radically affordable rates. And in my experience, they are genuinely committed to helping you finish your degree in the fastest, most economical way possible. And I really respect that. When you use my link, snhu.edu slash Josh, you can see the average salary for a game programmer and get free information about the program. And hey, maybe you'll even enroll. You wouldn't be the first person to do so using my link. But for real, clicking the link is totally free, so don't hesitate if you're interested or know someone else who might be. Thanks again to SNHU for sponsoring today's video. Back to RuneScape. 69. Nice. Alright, mystery box time. Something exciting? Come on, something big. Oh, we hit the rare table and it was 3k. Oh, that sucks. Oh, it could have been something so good. And there's a big level 70 thieving. We could pickpocket from paladins, which, uh, yeah, that's not never happening. Hello, Mr. Genie. Lamp on crafting for level four crafting. Slowly working our way towards being able to do something. 71. 72. 73 thieving. By the way, these levels are taking over two hours each already, and we're about a quarter of the way through the grind. Another real genie for level five crafting. They recently made a change to random events where the ones that give costumes will give you a lamp if you have all the costume pieces already. That has made an insane difference in the rate of getting lamps, so I'll probably get a lot more lamp crafting levels this episode. And there's a huge milestone, 75 thieving. We can now pickpocket from gnomes, which are really, really not too far away. 76 thieving. I am at a uh, very low HP. Uh, <laughs> any bets on what level it takes me to die for the first time? Hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> And another XP lamp from a Leo random event. There are a lot more lamps coming in. I can really tell the difference. Check it out, guys. I can get a Slayer task from a... Uh, Javradel. What's my task? Your new task is to kill Colonel. One Colonel. Yes. Let's do this. Destroyed your reward. Do I get Slayer XP? A best Slayer task I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> 77 thieving. That is huge for so many reasons. First of all, I finally hit the 50% success rate on pickpocketing Watchmen. So I'm finally at breaking even. Second, 430,000 GP in my inventory. I'm estimating that I'll end this grind with about 860,000, so I believe this marks the actual halfway point of this section of the thieving grind. The Watchmen are rebelling. And there is 79 thieving, very nice. And we've even got a little genie lamp here for seven crafting as a, uh, as a, as a, as a little treat. And there is a huge level 80 thieving. The first 80 on the account. Just two more to go now. To celebrate the milestone, I've got a fun you know fact for you. Watchmen edition this time. Watchmen have no drops, so they're clearly only in the game to be pickpocketed. And whether it was intentional or not, Jagex made this room the perfect place to AFK pickpocketing. 
Ideally, you want your target to get stuck somewhere it can't move so you can just spam click without looking, and this room has not one, not two, not three, four, five, or six, but seven areas where you can easily trap watchmen. The bunk beds have lots of room, and the ladders are conveniently near the corners of the room, but I think my favorite is trapping a watchman between this table and chairs. This just looks so funny. All these spots make it really easy to pay no attention while thieving, which is usually good, but not always. Oops, 80 thieving is where I die to not pay attention. <laughs> 81 thieving man it is gonna be so cool to have 82 thieving i'm gonna be able to do basically everything in the game that requires thieving <gasps> that is the second time in over 40 hours right here at the end it's just it's getting to be too much i guess i don't know it's uh ugh. <laughs> Oh, wow, it is finally over. This is the last pickpocket. And of course, I am still struggling because the rate on this has been terrible the whole time. But there it is. Finally, oh my god, 82 thieving has been achieved. And it doesn't even tell me that I can do the thing that I need to do. Here, let me fix it. It should say you can now pick lock this stupid door in the dungeon that no one ever goes to except for dirty snowflake iron men perfect this has been a 55 hour grind and i am so thankful it's over i can't wait to get down there and take on salar and the twisted though i am a little sad i didn't see the rocky pet as i think i was about 20 percent of the drop rate but it's whatever I did end up with over 1 mil though, check that out, I love to see that. And this will cover the cost for buying full mystic once I can finally enter the wizard's guild, which itself is a chunk task. But that of course requires 66 magic, which is really the last big grind remaining on this account. Alright, we can finally use the lockpick to pick the door open, and that is a chunk task complete as well as an elite diary task. That's crazy, we have one easy and one elite. This means that we can run straight to Salarin and never get poisoned, which means it's time to dive into what this video is all about. It's time to kill the boss. Let's talk Salarin. Salarin the Twisted is a super weird boss. It almost feels wrong to call him a boss, but he's listed as one on the wiki and the game treats him like he's extremely powerful, being called one of Kandarin's most dangerous chaos druids. But I think what qualifies him most as a boss are his unique mechanics and his unique drops. As I mentioned in my previous videos, Salarin drops the Sinister Key, and for years was the only monster to do so, though they were added to the loot table for Magpie Implings and the Chaos Fanatic much later. The Sinister Key opens the Sinister Chest in another room of the dungeon. At the time of release, this chest was the only source of Torstals in the entire game, meaning you had to kill Salarin in order to get them. But like I mentioned earlier, killing Salarin isn't that simple. He's immune to all damage. Well except for attacks from the mind. Now, just picture yourself in 2002 when this was released for a sec. What would you think attacks from the mind means? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you guessed he can only be damaged by strike spells, congratulations, you're right. Attacks from the mind because mind runes, get it? Yeah, Salarin can only be damaged by the weakest spells in the game. Kind of awful. But wait, there is a silver lining. Salarin isn't just susceptible to strike spells, he gets annihilated by them. They will always land not only their max hit, but a weird boosted max hit that deals way more damage than the spell can normally deal. These spells do 9, 10, 11, and 12 damage respectively on every hit that lands. And they give full XP for those hits, meaning Airstrike always gives 23.5 XP, which is 150% more than its normal possible max hit. And Firestrike will always give 35.5 XP, an insanely efficient rate for the low rune cost. For a normal account looking to kill a boss, this is probably perfectly fine I imagine, hitting straight 12s is a respectable DPS. But for this account, this is truly a godsend. My last big goal is to get to level 66 magic, and my best source of runes is killing chaos druids, which thankfully drop air runes and mind runes. Salarin's quirky combat mechanics turn these runes from the worst spell in the game to actually a highly efficient training method. 
In fact, I believe that barring strictly profitable methods like alchemy or plank make, this may be the most cost effective magic training method in the game, maxing out at 4.5 XP per GP spent on runes. That means that if you spend 100k on runes, you expect to get 450k magic experience. That seems kind of insane. This can obviously be amazing for Iron Man, but even for low level main accounts, this can be profitable as the Sinister Key is currently selling for over 30k on the GE. Anyway, that was a long way of saying that Salarin equals good magic XP for me, and I'm happy. That was a lot of talking, so let's actually see it in action. I have over 2,000 mine runes stocked up from my recent clue juggling grind killing men, so let's see how many Salarin kills we can get and if we can find any sinister keys. This is the hallway to get to Salarin, and this is the weird agility obstacle that requires level 67 agility. Here he is. Salarin the Twisted. Your pitiful attacks cannot hurt me. Well, actually, one of my most pitiful attacks can hurt you. Taste the power of Wind Strike. Yeah. And look at that. They always hit for 9 consistently. 9's every time. This is going to be so good for XP. Though I am getting kind of beat up right now, so I'm going to need to figure out a better way to do this than just face tanking him. But yeah, that's the first Salarin kill. I've heard that there's a weird safe spot where you can get him to back up against the wall, but uh, let's see, how do I set this up? So it looks like if I'm behind these skulls, he'll always retreat. And I mean, this isn't quite right, but uh, I'll get better over time. Really the important thing here is how much more value I get out of my strike spells. As you can see, each of these is giving me way boosted XP like I talked about, and this is going to be critical for hitting my magic goals in this account. So yeah, that's the basics of this boss. Let's see some Salarin kills and what kind of loot we can get. By the way, if you like learning about this type of obscure old content, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing as these are the type of things I love to cover in my videos. One of the annoying things about this grind is that I don't have a staff so I cannot auto cast my spells. So I'll have to do a lot of manual casting of spells. It's going to be really tiresome and really tedious, but it's actually faster than auto casting with a staff. So hopefully that can make up for it in some kind of weird way. And there is the first drop that makes Salarin the unique boss that he is, the Sinister Key. Like I said, I will be stockpiling these, but I will be opening at least one Sinister Chest this episode. First inventory beating up Salarin the Twisted, and we end off with two Sinister Keys after about 100 strikes spells. Strikes spells? Strike spells. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up with a lot of these. <laughs> gonna be pretty interesting. And the very first magic level of the grind, 46 magic. Excited to finally at least start getting somewhat numerically close to the goal of 66. Hey, there is a weird kind of an upgrade, I suppose. A black dagger. I've actually been waiting for this drop for a little while, even just for the swag. It has that same weird magic attack bonus that uh, all daggers have, but it's obviously slightly better than the iron dagger, so that's kind of nice to see. 48 magic. I have found a relatively easy way to keep Salarin in his safe spot without having to uh, miss too many clicks by keeping him in the corner over here. Hello there, Mr. Genie. Why, thank you so much. Is it possible this lamp gives us a level? It does indeed. Level 8 crafting. It's crazy how fast I've been able to level this up. And there is the first 1,000 casts on Salarin. We got a good handful of levels, up to 48. It was 137 kills of Salar and the Twisted, and we're looking at 18 Sinister Keys, which feels actually quite good, quite above rate there. We have about another thousand casts to go. One weird thing I've noticed is that whenever Salarin drops a super defense potion one dose like this, it just looks like a giant coin on the ground. <laughs> Obviously it's a bottle, but like, doesn't that just like look like a, a big coin? <laughs> New item idea, big GP. This rocks. I am your shield, babe. And there is 50 magic. Every magic level counts so much as we just crawl our way to that 66 goal. Keep in mind, we're not even a quarter of the way there at this point, though. Oh my goodness, do you see what's sitting underneath that law rune? An elite clue scroll. One in 500 from Salarin Twisted. Let's take a look at what this is. There's a small, small chance that it might actually be something that I have some use for, which is even hard to believe, but let's see. 
Ah, Tarn's Lair. Now that, that is extremely far away. Still really cool to see this. I am going to drop this one because I'm still just holding out the tiniest bit of hope that I will see the elite clue scroll that I actually want to see. 65 hit points. That is really satisfying. I've been looking at 64 hit points for a really long time as I had to heal up constantly when I was leaving the Watchmen. So seeing 65 is actually a really satisfying change. 51 magic and that is going to be the last level as we're just about out of runes here. And yep, that was the last cast for now. Let's go take a look at what we've managed to gather through this grind so far. And there we go, we got 22 Sinister Keys, which I'm very happy with, and here's the overall loot for 269 Salarin kills. One nice thing is that he drops some runes, all of which are useful to me, so it helps keep the magic grind going bit by bit. But of course it's not enough to sustain the grind, so that only means one thing, it's time to head back to Chaos Druids and gather up some more runes. But before I jump back down there, I have a not so fun Yanil fact for you guys. Bots. The main city of Yanil is generally pretty bot free, there's not much to bot here after all, but I discovered not one, but two rampant bot farms in the agility dungeon. In the room with the chaos druids, I found that almost every single world has a guy in it that looks like this, but it actually makes it incredibly difficult to find a free world to kill the chaos druids for myself. And remember how I said almost nobody knows about Salar and the Twisted? Well, there's at least one other person, and he's running a massive bot farm as well. Most worlds at Salarin have a guy in this interesting setup. It's kind of sad to me that the only people killing Salarin besides me are bots. I'm sure they think they're safe in this completely ignored corner of the game, and well, they're kind of right. I'm sure there's nothing we can do about it, but Jagex, fix your game please. I've had to resort to hanging out in high risk worlds just to find a free world, but now that I have worlds myself, Doing this is so chill, so relaxing, I love killing Chaos Druids, it's such a satisfying grind. And this makes me that much more grateful that I did the thieving grind already because it makes these trips so much more efficient. It makes it so much easier to bank and quickly run back down without any risk, I don't need to bring any food, it's just that much more chill. Oh, what, was that a loop half of the key? That is very rare. Yo, this inventory was cracked for law runes. That is nine drops of law runes in this inventory alone. That's so much XP. How much even is that? That was 774 magic XP in one inventory. That probably sounds like nothing, but to me, that's amazing. That's so crazily good. And that is a huge level, 73, and yes, of course, Bodhi, whatever, but there's actually a much more important thing. Level 73 strength should allow me to hit a new max hit of 10. There it is, the big 10 new max hit. The 10 is especially good because, as you can see from a little health bar up there, Chaos Druids only have 20 health, making it theoretically possible to now two shot these guys not gonna lie that was an insane maze run and we got <laughs> mithril ore and colon arrows Ugh, not what i wanted at all that sucks it's a fun little 74 strength always love to feel a little something <laughs> Alright, killing chaos druids has been a lot of fun so far, but I need a little bit of an AFK activity, so I'm gonna try flinching the ogres with my new best in slot flinching weapon. Hey, 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 so useful. And as this is the first time I'm killing these guys, I have another fun Yanil fact for you, Ogre Edition. There are lots of different types of ogres in the game, we've seen them all, but I'm guessing you've never picked up on this one subtle difference. In fact, you won't even find this on the wiki page for ogres. Here are two different ogres. Can you tell them apart? I think it's pretty clear that one is holding a weapon and one isn't. But did you know they behave differently too? All around Gutenoth, there are different groups of ogres. The unarmed ones are aggressive and will certainly bonk you if given the chance. On the other hand, the armed ogres are actually non-aggressive, as they tend to stand around named NPCs who you need to talk to for part of the Watchtower quest. This is really nice for me. I don't have to worry about going AFK and dying to the ogres, as I'm going to be flinching them in the background while I do some editing. So, I uh, haven't shown off much, but this area, all here outside of the castle walls, is within my area. So, uh, we're gonna find a little flinch spot. Okay, this seems to be a pretty functional flinch spot, and there's the first ogre kill on the account for some big bones. 
I guess I should probably talk about why I'm killing these guys other than as a pretty mediocre AFK and an excuse to use my otherwise worthless clue scroll loot, which I'm definitely not still sad about, but anyways. These ogres have two chunk tasks associated with them. The main one being their longbone, dropped at a rate of 1 in 400. That's pretty awful, but it's not actually that bad as I'll probably hit around that many kills in the end anyway. That's because I also need their drop of wild blood seeds, so I can finally plant them for the farming task I raked my way to a few episodes ago. I'll need 4 wild blood seeds to plant them, and at a rate of 1 in 85, I'll probably come pretty close to killing 400 or so ogres. Hey, a new unique item, strawberry seed. <laughs> Uh, not really all that excited by it, doesn't do anything for me, but I couldn't get that before, so now I can. It is really satisfying to see that 11 max hit with the Black Longsword. I was definitely disappointed with it in the casket, but it's nice that it has a niche use here for this weird activity. <laughs> well, that did not take long at all. Ooh, wow. Nice, the long bone. What? <laughs> I was not expecting that. I've been only doing this for like an hour. What? That's so funny. It's literally 14 KC. <laughs> well, I guess that's a chunk task checked off. Oh my god. 434 chaos runes off that maze. Christmas came early, baby. Seriously, these chaos runes represent about 17,000 mage XP, which is absolutely insane for me. This easily just saved me multiple hours of grinding. And that ogre is the 100th ogre kill. If you ignore all of the random event loot down here, you will see our ogre loot. We've got really lucky on the rare drops off this. Avento seed, two cactus seeds, snapegrass seed, those are all super rare drops above 1 in 500. The ogre RNG has been pretty insane so far. Of course, even with all the good rolls we've got, we have not seen the actually more common wild blood seed drop, so we're still a ways from our ogre goal, but... I'm feeling really, really good about those chaos runes. I'll probably switch on and off doing this with killing chaos druids whenever I need to be more or less AFK. So I've been killing lots of Chaos Druids and during that time I've been trying to calculate just how many I think I'll need to kill for the runes for 66 magic. You guys seem to like this type of data stuff so here's some fun Yanil math. The Chaos Druids drop these runes which I'll use for these spells. These are the average XP value for each spell in a very rough sense as it's hard to account exactly for splashes. Each one of these has sort of a rune stopgap, meaning the rune that drops the least frequently. By multiplying the drop rate of that rune by the average XP gained, then adding it all together, we can get the average expected mage XP per Chaos Druid kill, which is about 15 XP per kill using these spells. If we look at the last time I was training magic, I had about 4,000 Chaos Druids killed and 114,000 magic experience. Subtract that from the total of almost 500k XP needed, and the total comes out to somewhere in the ballpark of 380,000 more XP needed to level 66. 380,000 divided by 15, the average XP per kill, gives us around 25,000 more Chaos Druid kills, with the total coming in under 30,000, which was my initial calculation. That's quite good, but this video would have taken another month or two to come out if I went all the way for 66 magic here, so let's shoot for the halfway point. If you know your runescape math, you know that 59 is the halfway point to 66, as your XP doubles every 7 levels. So I'll be gathering the runes to get to level 59 in this episode. Mmm, look at all those runes. It's not every day you see one of every type of rune that the Chaos Druids can drop. And there's a big 75 strength. Strongington. And here's another lamp for another crafting level. I realize I probably should have said why I'm lamping crafting, but I'll just save that for when we actually get to the level I've been waiting for, because I think it's going to happen in this episode. Oh, huh, that was 23 Chaos Runes from Prison Pete. I didn't realize you could even get Chaos Runes. That's so good. The random events have been insane for runes lately. Hey, shout out to <laughs> this guy. Thanks for the bond, brother. And also, I don't know what got into you guys, but I received so much kindness from you all during the filming of this episode, and all I can say is thank you so much. It's stuff like this that really makes me grateful and proud to be a part of the OSRS community. 
Seriously, it makes my day every time, and shout out to every one of you who even just stopped by and said hello. Got yet another mystery box. I get so excited every time I have one of these. Let's see what it is this time. Mystery box. <laughs> Someday. Hey, level 76 strength. 76 allows me to hit my max hit of 10s while using the other combat styles. So I think I'm actually going to get some attack levels. Probably get attack up to 60 before getting defense up to that level as well. There was 57 attack, and as you can see, I'm about to be 6 hour logged. It's the first time I've seen that in quite a while, but killing these cast druids has honestly just been a lot of fun lately. And this is the 10,000th chaos druid kill. I do believe this is probably going to be a pretty good place to take a break and train up some magic, and hopefully we'll get to the little goal I've set for myself. The rune tab is back to looking rather healthy with a lot of air runes. Oh my god, that's a lot. Tons of chaos, and of course the mind runes, probably the most valuable. And like I was just saying, these are the spells we're going to be casting, so let's get to it. As with a couple episodes ago, I will be telegrabbing these Janger berries. These things spawn really fast and are sort of like budget prayer potions for me, so I'll be telegrabbing these for a good handful of levels. 52 magic. 53 magic. And this is the last telegrab for the time being. Didn't get us another level, but got us really close. But I do have a lamp here to put into crafting to get another crafting level. Level 10 crafting, that's what I've been looking for this whole time. We can now craft bowstrings and crossbow strings, meaning that if we do find our way to a spinning wheel, we effectively unlock the range skill in like a normal way. <laughs> uh, very cool. I think next up, we're going to take some chaos runes down and um, crumble some undead. Ooh, that is a clean 1200 Jango berries is actually really funny. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Very nice. It's a lot. 1200 prayer restore? I don't know if I'll end up using those for that, but maybe someday. All right, we've got the insane mage set up. Uh, and it's time to mess with some skeletons. And there is that level 54 magic. Very nice. One more for high alchemy, which is a ton of banked XP that I haven't been able to use yet. And there it is, the big 55 magic. Unlocking high level alchemy. So useful for this account, not for the money, of course, but for the XP. It's really, really good XP for basically just one nature rune. And I have lots of nature runes stocked up in the bank. And the final crumble undead. That was significantly more XP than I was expecting to get out of Chaos Runes because of that amazing RNG I got from the Maze Random. About halfway through this next level, let's switch over to some High Alchemy. I found some Oak Longbows in my bank, and I think that means that it is time to enjoy some good old-fashioned Alking. <laughs> 65 XP per, that is insanely good. This is going to be amazing to level up. Be back with you with some levels. Beautiful 56 magic. We're really getting up there now. 10 levels until we can basically leave the chunk. That's so crazy to think. And here goes the final nature rune. Scooting in just over 200,000 magic experience. And we've got a nice clean 18k from all those. All right, here's the plan. So we've got a whole bunch of runes coming with us down to Salarin, and the plan is to get him with some wind strikes and then use curse on the chaos druids in between. So we're gonna be training magic in two different ways at the same time. And uh, these are the rest of my runes. So I'm hoping, really hoping this gets us to the level that I'm looking for, but we'll, we'll find out, I guess. Curse is such an obscure way to train magic. I love having to scrap together runes to squeeze out whatever magic XP I can. And there is the level 57 magic. Very nice. We can enchant diamond jewelry down the line. Now that is a good looking inventory for Sinister Keys. This inventory is probably worth uh, easily over 100k. 
racking up those sinister keys to do a big opening later, but like I said, I will do at least one chest opening this video. And this is unfortunately the last curse that I'm going to be able to do with my current runes. I'm out of earth runes, which I actually thought waters were going to be the stopping point, but it turns out earths are. So we'll actually have to um, gather some more before we can do more cursing. And here it is, 58 magic, 8 levels away now. That was quite a while of killing Salarin. Yeah, we've killed a total of 373 Salarin the Twisteds. At this point, I know that I'm not going to have enough runes to finish out this level, so I think what I'm going to do is go back to Chaos Druids and do about another thousand kills or so. I thought I mathed it out right, but the fact that I couldn't cast off all of my water runes as curses basically cost me that XP that I thought I had here, so we're gonna need to make up for that as we uh, gather some more runes, so let's get to it. And there goes 60 attack, very nice, we can eventually, someday, wield some dragon weapons. We are gonna switch over to defense now, just to keep things relatively even. And all this training has really done quite a bit for the account. Here's 80 combat. Big gains. And there was a nice level in the chat box. Level 50 prayer. I had to even it out. It was sitting at 49 for way too long. Just had to get it to a nice even 50. Looks good next to the range right there. Hey, 69 hit points. Nice. And there's 55 defense. You can tell by all the levels that killing even just a thousand of these guys is not a quick process. I do believe that this is going to be the last inventory of runes. This is actually a really nice looking inventory, so this should easily get me to level 59 magic. And there goes the last of the law runes. It's time for one last trip to Salarin to finish out the level. And after many Salarin kills, we're down to under 100 mine runes again. But I do believe that this will be level 59 magic, halfway to 66. So we are halfway through the magic grind. There's one more thing I have to do before the end of this episode. I said that I wanted to open at least one sinister key and get my hands on that coveted Torstal herb. Looks like we got exactly 40 Sinister Keys from over 400 Salarin kills. I think we're actually decently above rate. So I'm going to grab one of those and a Strange Fruit because you do get poisoned every time you open the Sinister Chest and the Strange Fruit is an anti-poison. Here we go. I'm super excited. I have yet to do this ever in my entire life. Let's open the chest. And there we go. Look at that. We have the grimy torstal. Wow. And yeah, those are the herbs that you get. And uh, I'm getting beat up by a skeleton. <laughs> Before we wrap up the episode here, I kind of want to give my thoughts on Salarin now that I've done all the content related to him. He's a really strange boss, but I think some historical context may help us understand just why he is the way he is. Remember that Salarin was added to the game with the release of the agility skill. He was basically the reason to do agility as there were no shortcuts and very little high level agility content. And with the sinister chest, he was the sole source of the highest level herb in the game. The agility dungeon was trying a lot of different stuff, and agility as a whole was less of the convenient skill we now know it as, and was more used to unlock areas of content and progress deeper into a mysterious dungeon. At the time of release, Salarin probably seemed like an incredibly cool payoff for agility, being seemingly invincible with one hint in the entire game as to how to beat him. Given the probably small number of people who even had the high enough agility level to find him, I bet this is a legitimate obstacle to trying to kill him since information was a lot less available back in the day. Having spent so much time here, I absolutely love the agility dungeon. It reminds me less of a typical runescape area and a lot more like a single player RPG dungeon, like something you might find in a Legend of Zelda title. The linear design with content gated behind player progress, all leading to a boss that has a unique mechanic but who provides one-of-a-kind loot just screams classic RPG to me. It's also a complete package with the self-contained minigame of gathering sinister keys to open the chest. 
From a RuneScape perspective, it was also a great way to level many skills that were new to the game at the time. Thieving, Agility, and Herblore, with the level of efficiency of training one relying on progress in another. I genuinely wish OSRS had more content like this these days, with open-ended options for training and exploring leaving the decisions of how exactly to use the content up to the players, but giving a good incentive to do it all. Obviously this can't quite be recreated with the sheer density of endgame players running around, but I think the Agility Dungeon captures a very fun perspective on RuneScape content design, combining efficiency, mystery, and a sense of player agency that could be revisited in one way or another. But anyway, that's enough waxing philosophical about extremely dead content, it's time to recap all the massive progress in this episode. Here are the stats. In total, there was 127 hours of playtime added to the account, meaning I spent over 60 hours killing Salaran and the Chaos Druids to go from level 45 to 59 magic, and gaining just over 180,000 XP. That comes out to around 3,000 magic XP per hour. We checked off even more chunk tasks than I was expecting, with the 82 thieving diary task completed, acquiring a sinister key, and even finding a longbone wildly below drop rate. That leaves us with one very clear goal for next time. 66 magic, and finishing the chunk. And while 7 levels might not seem like much, trust me, next episode is going to be just as big a grind as all the others. Thanks for sticking all the way to the end. As always, you can find the original soundtrack I composed for this series in a playlist down below, and you can watch my other series, Sir Lumbington, if you want more region-locked content. And don't forget to check out SNHU using my link in the description if you want to get more information and help out the channel. But anyway, until next time, bye bye <laughs>